Hello and welcome to the World Wanderers Podcast, your source for travel stories, travel destinations, and travel philosophy. I'm Amanda. I'm Ryan. And we're your hosts. Hey everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Year in Review episode of the World Wanderers Podcast. This is something that we've done for four years now. Yeah, I think since... 2016, 2015, maybe? 2015 was the first one, and we've done 2015, 16, 17, 18, oh, 19, five years. This is the fifth edition. Wow. <laughs> How fun and amazing is that? Um, but yeah, in this episode, we like to take a look back at the year as a whole and talk about all of the incredible places that we've been, the things that we've done, the things that maybe weren't so incredible, the ways that the podcast has evolved. Because as you know, as a listener of this show, the podcast is always kind of changing and evolving and growing and becoming new and interesting things. And so that's what this episode is all about. Yeah. And we really like to do this as a part of our own personal reflections. We would be kind of looking at this stuff in our own journals and our own conversations. And it's really fun to be able to share stuff that's really specific to our travels and to the world wanders with you guys. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover everywhere that we've been in 2019. And it has been a really, really busy year. So we kicked off 2019 in one of our favorite cities in the world, Mexico City. It's where we spent Christmas and New Year's for Christmas 2018, New Year's 2019. And after Mexico City, we headed down to Guatemala. Yeah, and so I actually quit my job around this time. So if you've been listening for a while, you also know that over the past couple of years, I had been working full-time remotely while traveling. And so in Guatemala, we based ourselves in Antigua. We got a co-working space. We had two different Airbnbs. One of them was really, really nice. And during that month was kind of uh, a transition month. We were working all week and then doing our usual go out and evenings, go out for adventures on the weekends. And then after that, we went to Lake Atitlan to kind of celebrate some newfound freedom uh, and have a really cool experience exploring one of the coolest places in Central America, like at Titlan, really, really awesome. And then we went back to Mexico. Yeah, so we headed to Mexico City where we got to hang out with our good friend Rory for a couple of days. And then we headed to Puerto Escondido, which is in the state of Oaxaca, sort of on the southwest coast of Mexico City. And we took a week-long sort of vacation I guess two things, two reasons we did that was one, I turned 30 on that trip. So that was pretty exciting. And then also second, we were gearing up to head home for me to do a big yoga teacher training that I had been anticipating for about a year at that point and just wanted to take a little bit of time to decompress before diving into that. Yeah. And Puerto Escondido was amazing. We we're going to talk probably a little bit more about it when we talk about our favorite places, but a really cool beach in Oaxaca State in Mexico. And from there, we connected back through Mexico City and flew back to Canada and Vancouver, where, like you mentioned, doing the yoga teacher training. And we were in Vancouver for, I think, our longest stretch of any place the entire year, right? Vancouver was tied with Canmore. So we spent six months in total in Canada, which as you guys know, if you've been following along for the last couple of years is actually a really long time for us to spend in Canada. But it was really cool because we spent the first three months in Vancouver, which Ryan was actually born in Vancouver, lived the first few years of his life there, but hasn't lived there since. And I've only ever been there just on weekend or week long trips to visit friends. We both have a ton of community there. And so it was really awesome to check out living in another Canadian city for a couple of months. So we did that before we headed to Canmore, which as you guys know, is our, our home base in Canada where we spent three months over the summer. Mm -hmm. And as always, great times in the Rocky Mountains in Alberta. And then we planned during that time our next stop, which was going to be Guadalajara in Mexico. So we took a trip from Canmore back to Naramata, British Columbia, which is where I grew up and where we store Amanda's car. And many of our things. <laughs> Thank you, parents. And then we flew down to Guadalajara, Mexico. Guadalajara was a place we'd only been once before for one day, but we decided we want to check it out. And we spent six weeks there and really, really enjoyed it. 
Yeah, when we decided that we wanted to go back to Mexico, we decided we should try out a city other than Mexico City. As you guys know, we really love Mexico City. It's clearly, clearly visible by how many times we went there in 2019. <laughs> or someone who likes to comment on our iTunes reviews. They only talk about Mexico. We just really love Mexico, guys. Uh, but Guadalajara was really awesome. We had a really, really, really fantastic time while we were there. And while we were there, we also got to visit Guanajuato, which had been on the Mexico bucket list for a couple of years. And then we also got to go see our friends Jake and Michelle Henley and Jagger down in Ajijic, which is only about an hour away from Guadalajara. Yeah, and after that and our time in Guadalajara and those those weekend trips that we took, we packed up all our stuff and did a bit of a kind of six weeks of craziness, um, starting off in Monterey where we scaled a mountain and enjoyed some of the local cuisine. <laughs> yeah, and then we headed back to Mexico City because as you do, we went to Day of the Dead and we got to hang out with our friends Rachel and Sasha from Grateful Gypsies and Becky from Tokyo Becky, as well as the School of Travels podcast. So it was super awesome to connect with some, some friends in Mexico City and of course be back in our favorite city before we hopped on a plane and headed down to Costa Rica. Yeah, and in Costa Rica, we started off in Nosara. Amanda was leading a yoga retreat there, which I was a participant in, and enjoying the beautiful views and sunsets and beaches in Costa Rica. We went from Nosara down to Santa Teresa, and then up into the mountains, into Monteverde and La Fortuna, and then finally to San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, where we took our last flight. Yeah, and we headed to Panama City, where we are right now, and it was a whirlwind. We'll, we have podcast episodes coming out in 2020 on Costa Rica and all of our travels there, so you guys will get to hear more about that soon, but that was like a crazy, we had three weeks in Costa Rica, and like kind of the two weeks before was just insane. Getting to Panama City was like, ah, sigh, we don't need to like... <laughs> do as many crazy travels anymore. And as much as we love to travel, obviously, and we're so grateful for all the experiences, it's nice to balance, you know, the hectic jumping around every couple of days, every week with just being able to settle. And so we're really excited to be in Panama City. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about Panama City and our plans for 2020 a little bit later on in this episode, but let's dive into some of our favorites travel-wise. So, Amanda, what was your favorite place that we visited this year? It's literally so hard to just pick one out of all those destinations. I mean, everything is so different and unique. I really, really enjoyed Guatemala. It was a country that I'd wanted to visit for so long. You know, we've had these plans for Central America since 2015 when we ended up moving to Atlanta because you got that job. And it's been cool to actually visit a little bit more of Central America slowly but surely. So Guatemala was awesome. Uh, Puerto Escondido, like you mentioned, is really incredible. And, you know, of course, I love Mexico City, so I'm so grateful for the fact that we got to go three times this year. And hopefully, you know, 2020 looks looks similar to that um, as well with some travels back to Mexico City. But as always, I love Mexico City. I, I continue to wait to arrive and just feel sort of over it. But every time I get back, I just feel like there's like a little spark inside of me that gets lit up. And I just, I love that city so much. So it was really incredible to be there. Living in Vancouver was awesome. Going back home to Canmore was really great. So there was a lot of good stuff this year. And so what was your favorite? I'm going to go ahead and say Antigua. Okay. What about you? Cool. Yeah. Um, Antigua was actually one, as I look back and we went through before we started recording and wrote down all the places we went. Antigua was one, I think, that as time goes on, I think about more fondly. I think while we were there, it was a bit chaotic because I was working a lot and finishing up a job. And maybe we didn't have as much context because we hadn't visited um, Costa Rica and hadn't spent much time in Panama. And maybe that, that has helped to just kind of understanding a bit more about like what prices are like in Central America in general. But I think looking back on it, I feel 
like even more fond of Antigua than I really, I think, was able to appreciate at the time. And maybe that's something definitely can learn from. Um, but Antigua was really cool, really beautiful part of the world. Yeah, yeah. Just on that note, I actually really feel the same way. I mean, when we arrived there, I think we were both surprised a little bit by the prices. They were definitely on par with Mexico, if not a little bit higher in a lot of the restaurants, which was a bit surprising for us. And we had the most incredible first week there in like the best Airbnb with a cat. And then we moved Airbnbs and it wasn't as luxurious. And I think that that was a bit challenging. Well, let's say definitely luxurious probably isn't a word. It was... It was, it was bare, low, super duper bare bones. Yeah. And it was low budget and, and it was fine. Like we, we chose it, we booked it obviously, but I think it's just hard when you go from something that's really incredible that you're like, wow, I love this experience to something that's not the same. And we had some challenges with the internet and the co working space. And I think that it is a reminder that the context of your life situation can really impact the way that you experience a place in the moment. But really Antigua has amazing climate. It's like 25 Celsius all day, every day, pretty much. And beautiful views of the volcano, really lush, super green. The houses are cute. There's so much good food there. Super accessible to Atitlan, which I definitely one of my favorite places that I've also been really, really cool stop. And yeah, just, just a really great city. Yeah. And so for me, the contenders I think are Guanajuato, um, in Mexico, really, really cool city that is popular, but not like on the top of the radar for people to go to. I think that Naramada in British Columbia is up there for me. It's Home down. somewhere where we spent quite a bit, not quite a bit, but a decent amount of time this year, a little bit more. And I think it was really nice to spend time and appreciate the area. And it's a place where outside of people from like Vancouver, really tourists don't go. So I think it's a place that could get a lot more shine as far as like a place that people from other countries visit because it's a really, really beautiful part of the world. Um, But for me, the one I'm going to go with is Puerto Escondido in Mexico, in Oaxaca. It is definitely, I think, a well-known place, but I'm usually the type that doesn't enjoy a beach town vacation as much. But Puerto Escondido, we just had an awesome experience there. I think part of it was getting lucky with the time of year. A bit in a shoulder season, I think, so it wasn't crazy busy. But really beautiful place, part of the world that's like still a bit low-key, where, yeah, there's lots of cool restaurants to eat at, and it's a bit more maybe of a backpacker spot than a big resort spot. But really cool town, really cool beach, just very laid back and think maybe a lot of the things that you picture when you picture like Costa Rica, but even more so and more affordable. So really, really enjoyed Puerto Escondido. I think it was my favorite place that we went this year. Yeah. I had a feeling you were going to say that. So that's why I didn't choose it or part of why I didn't choose it. But I also really loved Puerto Escondido and I also really loved Guanajuato. If you're traveling through Mexico, definitely two places I a hundred percent recommend to visit. And I've actually been slowly trying to tell my friends as they're like, Oh, I'm flying to Cancun. Like, should I go to Tulum? I'm like, well, actually Tulum's not my favorite beach town in Mexico. Mine is Puerto Escondido. So trying to encourage some more people to go, go and visit that instead of just going to the Mayan Riviera area of Mexico. There is. There's a lot. There's a lot in Mexico. I mean, it's got two coasts. There's so many beaches. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And so favorite experience, what would you say your favorite experience from the year was? This is a hard one. I have a couple different favorite experiences. I mean, turning 30 in Puerto Escondido is obviously something really memorable for me. I think that one of my favorite experiences is actually living in Vancouver. It was really fun to reconnect with some really good friends, uh, to, to live in Canada, but feel like there was like an excitement to it because, you know, Alberta is where I lived my whole life. It's very familiar and there's a lot of beautiful things about that. And there's reasons that I love going back there, but it was cool to be back in Canada and to be experiencing, you know, I think one of Canada's best cities, if not Canada's best city and be able to live there and, you know, kind of just experience what that life was like. I really, really loved that experience. So yeah, I I think I would say that that was probably one of my top experiences. What about you? 
I think there's definitely a couple things that come to mind, but I think the thing that prominently comes to mind and right away comes to mind is doing the Via Ferrada in Monterrey in Mexico. So for anyone who doesn't know, Via Ferrada is kind of like rock climbing, but there's kind of metal bars that make it a bit more ladderish. I don't know what the technical definition that separates rock climbing or hiking from a Via Ferrada, but there is one in Banff. And so I think our image of that was a bit, definitely a bit more laid back than what the reality of what we were getting ourselves into in Mexico was. And so the trip that we took in Mexico to Monterey was, I think it ended up being like six hours or seven hours of uh, climbing and doing all sorts of things from climbing straight up on metal bars to walking across a wire bridge and actually a wire bridge, nothing other than the wires. And then <laughs> climbing three consecutive ladders that were hanging suspended from wires uh, on, on, this, a cliff side. on a cliff face. Yeah. And then doing a, like an old school zip line and like a really old school rappel twice. Really, really crazy experience. One that like, I think I would have a very hard time convincing myself to do again. Uh, it was oh, there's, something there's zero chance <laughs> I would do that again. Somebody would have to pay me to do that again. I thought it was great and it was fun and it was exhilarating, but I will never do that again. Yeah. And I'm someone who's not acutely afraid of heights, but there's something different between being on like a tower of terror ride or being on the top of the CN tower where you're there briefly, but then you go down versus spending hours where you're just hanging off the side of this mountain and your palms are sweating and there's nothing below you. And you're kind of worried about the safety standards in Mexico. And you're there for hour after hour after hour and you just get worn down and you have to kind of take control of your mind and be like, okay, one step at a time, just one step at a time, one step at a time, you'll be off this eventually. And the feeling that you get when you're done that, both like physically tired and mentally tired, but also just feeling like very accomplished and kind of like you conquered some fear, I think really stands out as a, as a highlight memory for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. That's, that's a really good one to bring up. And I definitely echo all of those things. And we'll, we'll do a Monterey episode in the new year. So we'll be able to talk more in detail about that and our other experiences there. But yeah, that was definitely... There was a most exhilarating experience. That is definitely the one for me. <laughs> yeah. And then what would you say if you had, you had the chance, if the rules didn't dictate just one, <laughs> but if you had the chance, what other experiences stuck out this year? Yeah. So I think that as always being at home was really great. Um, I mean, we got married in the summer, which was really awesome. We'll talk about that more in life updates because it wasn't necessarily a travel experience, but obviously that was really special to me. So that, that stands out in my mind. Uh, a couple other ones that I would say would be Monteverde in Costa Rica was incredible. I really loved it there. We stayed at a beautiful Airbnb that was just so stunning and had a really, really amazing three days exploring the mountain area. The beaches in Costa Rica are obviously really beautiful, but I was like really taken by, by the mountains more so, I guess maybe more, just more of a mountain girl. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, those are a couple other ones that stand out. Oh, and of course, day of the dead in Mexico city, celebrating your 30th there, going to Lucha Libre, connecting with some friends. That was a really fun experience. Yeah, and, and one other for me, you kind of mentioned it briefly when talking about Guatemala, but when we went to Antigua on Airbnb, we found this really cool house there that was someone who works as an architect and he built his own house. And so it was really interesting and unique and kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was a small area, but built around a courtyard with a tree that kind of became like the center of this house. And so it was kind of indoor slash outdoor, the master bedroom was in like a really big open space with a high ceiling and then you kind of had this walkway connection to a living room that was really cool and there's also a little friendly cat that we got to hang out with um, and just that time there being in that space was really cool and for me a cool experience of like seeing a different side of like oh your accommodation can be like so much more than just a uh, place you're sleeping like if you can find a cool place like that it adds so much to your travel experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. So lots of great experiences this year. Kind of on the other side of it, if you could go back and do you know, something different in 2019, what would that be? 
I think that for me, when I look back at this, and I think this is something that people who travel can deal with, like whether that's taking some time off to go on a, a backpacking trip, just going on vacation, or being a digital nomad, it can always be a struggle to take care of your health. And so for me, because I was finishing up a time of like working a ton and just being a bit more stressed, I was kind of like, oh, I'll just let myself go for a while. I'll just, you know, be on a long, long, long weekend. And so in Vancouver, one of the things that's great about that city is there is amazing food all over the place, but between more drinking and more eating food and not exercising as much, definitely wasn't taking care of my health as mu- as much. And so I think for me, um, that's something going into 2020 and over the past last half of 2019 has been important, but I want to take a lot more seriously as well it would be the health part. How about you? Yeah, that's a really good one. And I think that Yeah, that's a really important and challenging one when you travel full time, for sure. You know, as we get older, obviously, we want to look at the longevity of our health and then also balance that with being able to have really fun experiences that involve, you know, food and maybe alcohol and donuts and eggnog and all (laughs) all the goodness. Donuts and lattes and pho and Aussie meat pies and pretzels. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for me, I think the biggest thing that stands out in my mind was is when we were in Costa Rica, we had a really small car for the first two weeks of our trip and we ended up trading it in for a 4x4. And if I could go back and do something different, I just booked the 4x4 right off the gate. I think that it's really hard to find straight up information about like you need a 4x4. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there now. I'm going to go ahead and put it in our blog posts and I'm going to put it in our podcast episodes. If you're going to Costa Rica, just book, book a four by four. Yeah. And it was one of those things where I feel like need is the tricky part where some people might like, oh yeah, you don't really need it because it's like theoretically and some degree physically possible to get around a lot of places in just a car. But our trip and our mental states improved so much with that investment to get pay, you know, I can't remember what it was. It was like 400 bucks more to get into a four by four, but we were just so much happier once we had so much less stress once we did that. So I think that's definitely a big one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the one that stands out in my mind the most. All right, so that wraps up the travel section or the where we've been section of this episode. And we're going to head into the podcast section from here. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick little break. All right, we are back from our break and heading into the podcast section of this episode. Ryan, tell us a little bit about the podcast in 2019. So 2019, I think, was a a good year for the podcast. It was a year in which the podcast turned five years old. Our the podcast officially is in kindergarten. Yeah, maybe potty trained, maybe not. I mean, what kind of podcast is this? Of course it's potty trained at five. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the age curve is like on a podcast. But yeah, this summer was the fifth year that we'd been podcasting. It's kind of crazy because it's one of those things you just do and do and do and don't really like think about. Um, but then you go back and it's like, hundreds of episodes and another cool threshold that we crossed this year was getting over a million listens um all time so not in this year but during those five years over a million times the podcast has been listened to which is also crazy to think about i think we've talked about on the podcast before one of the maybe like two weeks in to our podcast adventure we had a day where like 50 people listened to the podcast and we were like whoa I think that was like four months in. I was like, was that a mistake? (laughs) Like, what happened? Because it was like, we were like 10 listens, 50 listens. And we're like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, who are these people listening? Do we even know 50 people who would listen to us talk? And then to look back years later and be like, a million people have listened or some combination of people have listened a million times is kind of wild to think about. It's really, really crazy. So I guess... Thank you to everyone listening. We really, really appreciate you taking your time. I know now more than ever, there are a ton of podcasts out there that you could choose to listen to. And we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. 
and to connect with us, whether that's on social media or wherever, um, hearing your guys' stories, hearing about your adventures um, really is what motivates us to keep making the podcast. And so thank you, all the listeners. But this year also, we did 23 different episodes. We had a cool combination of interviews with interesting guests, destination episodes, and a few episodes where we did kind of travel journeys. We started our favorite cities series, which was a bit more of a structured episode that occasionally actually ended up being a little bit shorter <laughs> <laughs> occasionally it's kind of funny because we're like these are going to be 30, 30 minute minutes. episodes 50 minutes later <laughs> we just have a lot to say you know about these places because we love them so much and we've got a couple more episodes that'll be coming out in the new year as well with our favorite cities we've got a couple more cities that we want to chat about so you can expect a little bit more of that as well and so looking back on it What stands out to you as your favorite episode from this year? It's tough. It's tough. I mean, 23 episodes is, you know, not like every day. It's not 365 episodes by any means, but it's definitely quite a few episodes. And we had a lot of really great guests on this year. Um, But for me, I really enjoy our on location episodes. And so we did that with Guanajuato. And so that was an episode that I really enjoyed doing. It was a weekend that I had a lot of fun and I really enjoyed putting that episode together. I've also really enjoyed the Our Favorite Cities episodes. I mean, if you guys listen back to some of our OG episodes, they don't have that much structure and sometimes we're all over the place and <laughs> you know, just kind of trying to figure out how to talk about a destination. And I think that having a little bit more structure to talk about a city was something that you know, I, I felt really good about and it just made the episodes really fun to do because we weren't, we had done the planning beforehand. So um, I feel like those episodes were, were really fun to record. And yeah, we also had Sasha and Rachel from Grateful Gypsies back on the podcast. They're always super, super fun to chat with. And then we also had Rachel on again. She's been on the podcast a couple times now. And so just really grateful for you know their friendship and for them coming on the show. And then also just for the conversations that we have, we have with them because they're just really fun people to hang out with both on the air and off the air. So I think those would be mine. I know that's more than one. <laughs> I just Definitely I more than cho- one. I suck at choosing one. Yeah, so yours was Guanajuato? I think Guanajuato is top of the list. Okay, yeah, that was definitely up there for me. Really cool travel experience as well. It was cool to kind of make the episode the way that we did. I think for me, an overall theme from a lot of the podcast was we had the opportunity to catch up with a lot of people this past year, kind of like you mentioned. Um, a few different times we were able to talk to people that we talked to a few years ago, some of which we kept in touch with offline, but some we didn't, um, which was cool and fun. But I think for me, one that stands out was talking to Alex and Lisa from Career Gappers um, about the idea of taking a career gap and hearing their story and how much it mirrored a lot of what we've experienced. I think with travel, Sometimes we think of it as this thing where it's either only a vacation or like it's got to be the be all end all of like got to be a nomad, got to travel all the time. I think the idea of a career gap is one that's out there. I think it's becoming a bit more popular, but it really isn't something a lot of people think about. And I think it's something that is really important and for both of us has made a really meaningful impact on the way that we've pursued our lives in You know, the time we live in, we have so much freedom to pursue a course in our lives. We can do so many different things that we want to do if we choose and consciously set out to do them. But there's also these old school tracks. There's this idea of go to university, get a job, get promoted, follow whatever conveyor belt the society has laid out for you. And when you're working, it's really hard to take time and reflect on what do you want to do and how do you want to do it and how do you want to get there. And the career gap is like such an important, valuable way to kind of reset and choose a new path for yourself. And basically everyone I've ever talked to, it's always been a scary decision to like, oh, I'm going to leave my job and I'm just not going to do anything for six months or a year. It's a scary decision. It's kind of frowned upon. You feel like uh, a bit of a loser maybe for not having that thing you can answer really quickly and easily when someone says, hey, what do you do? But it's always, and everyone we've ever talked to resulted in 
new ideas, new direction, new motivation, and really valuable life lessons. And so I think that was a really important episode. I know I kind of went on a bit of a tangent there, but I think you should go listen to it if you haven't already. And we'll put a link for that in the show notes so you guys can easily access it. Access it. (laughs) Sess it. (laughs) Just go sess that thing. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about what you can expect from the podcast in 2020. But before we get there, let's move into our life section and talk about our life updates. This was a big year for life updates for us. So what were some of your top life highlights of 2019? Well, I think I'm obliged to say that we got married in 2019. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We we eloped. If you didn't get the wedding invite, it's because our parents also didn't get it. (laughs) Just the two of us. And... You know, for those of you who know us and and have listened for a while, then you'll know that Ryan and I have been together for a while. It was kind of not unexpected that we would get married at some point, or maybe at that point, I don't know, maybe everyone had given up on the fact that we might actually make it legal, but I don't know. It was just very informal and it was perfectly us and it was not something that was planned for a while. It was sort of like, hey, this whole boyfriend, girlfriend thing is getting a little old. Let's, uh, let's let's make it legally official. And we had kind of talked about maybe doing it somewhere more exotic because I think that that's something that maybe people had expected from us as travelers and of course would have been very cool, but it ended up being really perfect to do it in Canmore. I mean, Canmore to me is what I think of when I think of home and it's one of the most beautiful places in on the entire planet, in my opinion. And We had the most perfect day with the most perfect setting, and it was just really, really incredible. So that's definitely one for me, too. Yeah, and so this year, I think, as far as life stuff goes, I think we kind of had a similar similar format in terms of our travels where we were trying to settle down and base ourselves in places for a longer period of time. For this year, as opposed to previously, I think we had maybe a little bit more that time spread around a few places as opposed to like being seven months in Mexico city or a long stretch anywhere else. But yeah, spending a longer period of time in Vancouver, a pretty long period of time in Canmore, a longer period of time in Guadalajara and now starting a longer period of time in Panama city, I think has been a theme for us where we really enjoy and kind of require a bit more stability and routine to get all the things we need to get done, done. And also I think, I think I find that I just feel happier and more content um, when we are basing ourselves somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think if we've learned anything over the last like three, four years of quote unquote digital nomad life, it's been that we definitely thrive more when we've got a base. And then of course we still love to travel from there. So yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And I think going back to kind of life highlights before we look ahead at at the upcoming year, I think on top of getting married, some for me were, I mean, turning 30 was, was really cool and also came with a whole bunch of weird mind stuff around like, you know, just little things like, oh, our bio says like 20 somethings, like now I'm deceiving people because I'm 30 and oh my God, I'm like the age where it's like appropriate to be married and like have a baby. And I don't know. It's one of those things where I think that when I was 15, so half the age I am now, I imagined that I guess I would feel 30 or I would feel like an adult and like a mature individual. And I think one thing I'm learning is that like maybe you just always feel like yourself and you never really feel necessarily like your age. Um, Age is just really a number. So there was lots of like weird, interesting feelings, thoughts, emotions with turning 30. But overall, I've loved my 30s so far, still in the first year, but so far so good. Um, But being able to turn 30 in in Puerto Escondido was, was really special for me and just a really, really great week before diving into some really heavy, busy times. Um, My six months at home was really busy. I feel like I've tried to define it using a different word. And I guess the more positive side of that would be like, it was really abundant So for me, life highlight was completing my 300 hour yoga teacher training. It was a massive goal for me. It means I'm a 500 hour certified yoga teacher now, which is something I'm really proud of. So that gets added to the life highlights list as well. Do you have anything else other than getting married that was kind of a highlight for you? Yeah. So I also turned 30 not that long ago, which I feel like is a weird mental thing to be when the numbers at the front of your age change, it's like, oh, I feel like we all have these 
ideas about what that age means and you don't spend a ton of time thinking about it until it's arrived. But like when you're young, you think about 30 as this thing. It's like so far just in the future, you think about it as like, I don't know, maybe it's like a house or kids or family and you've got your whole life figured out. And so to arrive at that station and be like, oh, I'm still figuring a lot of things out, I think feels... <laughs> I don't know, disconcerting in some ways. I think it's definitely challenging. But yeah, to be able to have a birthday and turn 30 while we were in Mexico right by Day of the Dead. My birthday's in the end of October. Um, so that was a, a really cool experience. I think for me as well, just being able to collect really cool experiences and more and more as we travel and have built a community and a network of other people doing similar things, being able to kind of weave those travel experiences in with that community and meeting up with people. So a lot of our travel this year, we were able to connect with other people, whether that was our trip to Ajijic, um, some of the times in Mexico City, especially this last time, we had uh, a couple different friends all there at the same time. We were able to meet up and do stuff in Costa Rica. Um, we were there with friends. Uh, and here in Panama City, we're kind of setting out to do that again, to meet new friends, to build new communities. So I think that for me was a big highlight as well, just being able to spend more time connecting with people, especially as well. Vancouver is a place where a lot of people we know from university base themselves. Um, and then again in Alberta, which is kind of like our home base where there's lots of friends and um, connections out there as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so on the flip side of that, life lowlights, any, any lowlights from this past year or things that were not so great? I think for me, so I'm one big change for me was going from having a lot more work responsibilities to a lot more work freedom and doing more freelancing stuff and being required to be a lot more self-motivated. Anyone who's gone through that transition would probably echo the challenge that comes with it, especially someone like myself, um, where I am easily distracted and have lots of different wormholes that I like to go down. It, it's been a kind of a challenging year, both in terms of like building that structure into my own life to get things done and yeah, not having that, like that fallback of like, okay, people are expecting this thing from me Monday through Friday. got to get stuff done, got to work. Um, and going more to like, okay, what can I, create what can I do what can I start that's going to help me pay the bills and get by so challenging but fun and I think something I think that I've been thinking about for a long time prior to that so one of those like growing pains that you have to go through yeah yeah absolutely and I mean I've been through that so we've talked about this a lot off the air but it is really hard it's like all of a sudden you know somebody doesn't pay you if you don't work and you don't make any money if you don't do things because you don't have a job and you also don't have necessarily that many people requiring things from you. So it is, you do very much have to self-motivate and it can be, it can be challenging, but I mean, it's been really awesome to see you kind of step into the role of working for yourself this year. And I'm excited to see that grow for you in 2020. Um, it's definitely been amazing you know, we've definitely had more time to connect and spend with each other and work on things like the podcast and some other projects we have on the go, which has been really awesome. So I'm excited about that for sure. And how about for you? Yeah. When I was thinking about this, I was struggling a little bit because honestly, I feel like this year has been really awesome. I think that probably the biggest challenge or low light for me in 2019 has just been feeling the feeling of overwhelm. So I think maybe on the other side of what you've experienced, it's like I've gotten to a place where I've been able to build up my business and build up my, the work that I do. And, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's such a blessing, but it's also really overwhelming at times where I feel like, it's not even possible for me to take, you know, a full week off to co lead a yoga retreat or like a week off for us to take a honeymoon, which is not really what my goal was when I set out to work and travel. So I guess just looking at like the balance of things and bringing that equilibrium back into, you know, setting boundaries for myself around my work, um, outsourcing things that are not a good use of my time and, and that sort of thing. So it's been really valuable learning similar to yours, but definitely like the feeling of busy and overwhelm has been a challenge this year. Yeah. And so quickly flashing forward to 2020 and looking ahead at the life, the first thing 
what we wanted to talk about is a podcast change. So in January of 2020, we're going back to one episode per week of the podcast. So every Thursday you can get your World Wanderers fill. That's happening for January and we're going to kind of take it from there. So potentially in February as well, we'll kind of see as it goes, but excited to We've got a lot more content, uh, conversations we're having, things we're excited about sharing. And so we want to get those out and not have those building up a backlog. So we'll be going to one episode every week starting in the first week, first Thursday of January. Yeah, yeah, really excited about that. It's been, I guess, two years since we made the jump back to every two weeks. And so excited after, after two years of that to try something else out and see if that's working for us. And of course, for you guys who are listening and all that good stuff. And for 2020, we're going to be spending most of our time in Panama City. We've got a really great apartment here. And so this is going to be our home base for a little while. And we're going to be doing a lot of our travels from here. So making some travels back to Canada, hopefully some Europe adventures on the radar. We're going to be going to Colombia for Carnival in February, right around my birthday. And then also traveling a lot in Panama. So if you're going to be in Panama in 2020, definitely make sure you let us know. Uh, We'd love to meet up. If you have any friends or connections in Panama, hook us up because we're looking to make friends. And... Yeah, I think that that's kind of our biggest travel update for 2020, is it not? Yeah, it was. I feel like really, really excited about having, you know, a bit of a long term base. And so we moved into an apartment the other day. We're recording this from there now. It's a beautiful space for the beautiful view. And it's been really exciting. We've been here for three weeks now. Um, just having that challenge of like getting to know a new city and a new country and figuring out all the intricacies that come with it. How has their Spanish changed? How is it different than other countries we've been to? Um, how do things work here? What are like good places to visit, good places to eat? Just kind of the challenge of settling into a new city and also because we're planning on being here for the long term, having the motivation to like go out and get out of your comfort zone and do all these things. So we're taking Spanish lessons. We're, you know, trying to meet new people. I think it's really fun and I feel really excited about it. It's kind of like a bit different for us, but something that I think is an exciting change of pace. Yeah, absolutely. So we will obviously keep you updated as things, things, you know, progress here and as we travel around the country into the surrounding countries and all that good stuff. What other updates are there for 2020? Is there anything else? So yeah, if you are enjoying the Our Favorite Cities series, you have more to look forward to. We've got more episodes coming out in that series uh, in the new year. We are approaching it as something that we want to do periodically so that if if this is a style of episode you really like, um, it's the type of thing where if you listen to a recent one, you can go back and listen to the other ones and you're able to kind of see them in the feed and differentiate between the other episodes because they are a little bit different. Um, And so, yeah, those are going to be continuing on into the new year. Uh, In the new year as well, we're going to be, like you mentioned, focusing a lot of content on Panama. So um, doing more location episodes and um, adventures to Colombia and some other places that we'll keep you updated on as the year goes on. So lots more exciting travel stuff, more exciting conversations with people about travel and more uh, breakdowns of our favorite destinations with lots of good resources and information. Yeah, we've also got a couple of projects that we're working on behind the scenes that we're going to keep, I guess, secret for now because they're not totally ready to go. But we'll have some new and exciting updates for you guys and some other things that we're doing, hopefully in early 2020. And they're going to be they're going to be fun. I promise. So I think that's all. Yeah, that is it for 2019. So for everyone listening out there, we hope that you have an amazing holiday season, whether that's getting together with family, whether that's going out, vacationing, having an adventure, and an awesome New Year's. If we could give one suggestion to you that would be really kind of embrace what you want to do in the next year, whether that's travel, whether that's starting a business, whether that's starting a podcast, make it a year to actually get some of those things that have been bouncing around in your head out of your head and into reality. Make something happen for yourself. Um, Go and do the thing you want to do in 2020.
And we would love to hear from you. What was your favorite episode from this past year? Any type of episode that you really loved and you wanted to hear more of? And what was the favorite place that you visited this past year and the place that you want to visit in 2020? You can send us an email, as always, or better yet, go to the World Wanders, a community for travelers on Facebook and share what you want to visit and explore in 2020 and what you loved in 2019 and connect with the other members in the community. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so, so much for listening to all the episodes, but particularly for another year in review episode. We are so grateful to have you listening to the show and to be a part of our travel community. Until next time. Happy holidays. To find more information, relevant links, and photos talked about in this week's episode, check out theworldwanderers.com. If you have a question, comment, or feedback, send us an email at info at theworldwanderers.com. Join our community on Facebook at The World Wanders or on Twitter at World Wanders One. As always, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.